This demonstration, which I entitled Candle Snuffer, is one which combines a number of chemical and physical phenomenon and chemical physical changes, chemical physical properties, which provides for a pretty neat demonstration. And the kids, students, truly like it. The first part of the demo, and I'm going to do this in two parts, the first part is a device that is commercially available, and it consists of this plastic tube with some candles. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to light the candles. I'm going to light them in this the candles in the tube, and I'm also going to light the candle that's in this beaker. I'm going to react some sodium hydrogen carbonate, also known as baking soda, which I've already measured out prior to the setup. And I'm going to react that, the sodium hydrogen carbonate, with some hydrochloric acid. Now, I'm using three molar hydrochloric acid. You can use one molar. You can use acetic acid, um, one molar acetic acid or vinegar. Uh, you'll get the same effect, and that is the evolution of a gas. And if we take a look at our easel, we can see the reaction that's going to occur. The reaction being reaction of sodium hydrogen carbonate with a proton from the acid, forming the sodium ion, liquid water, and gaseous carbon dioxide. And it's the gaseous carbon dioxide that's, that's given off that will extinguish the flames as this carbon dioxide travels down the tube, provided I hold the tube at a certain angle. And the reason that the carbon dioxide will move down the tube is because carbon dioxide is more dense than air and will move down the tube. And as the carbon dioxide moves down the tube, because carbon dioxide does not support combustion, it will extinguish the flames. Now, you can't see carbon dioxide when carbon dioxide is in the gaseous state because carbon dioxide is a colorless gas. But we can follow the path by which it travels as we observe the candles being extinguished one by one. And that's the neat part of the demo. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to light the candles and then I'm going, and as well, I'm going to add the baking soda, the sodium hydrogen carbonate, to a flask that I have here. And then I'm going to react the hydrochloric acid with the baking soda to form the carbon dioxide. First, because we're going to lower the lights, first I'm going to pour the solid in. It's a lot easier to see that way. So I have my baking soda in my flask. Um, in a moment, I'm going to react it with the acid, but now I'm going to light the candles. Having lit the candles, I'm now going to react the baking soda with the hydrochloric acid to generate my carbon dioxide. react a little bit more to ensure that all of the air has been pushed out of the flask. Of course, because I can't see that, I won't know. Now I've put a piece, uh, a little bit of clay on the bottom of the tube to try to hold that tube in place at the edge of the beaker. If I may have the lights down now. And I'm going to pour the CO2 
down the tube. The hope is I generated enough CO2 to put out that last candle. On occasion, it doesn't do it. And this may be one of those occasions. Perhaps because we do have fans going in this room, the CO2 may not reach all the way down into the beaker. You can always redo this experiment. It doesn't take very long to do. I'm not going to do that today, but you get the, the idea that you can follow the path by which the carbon dioxide moved down the tube and extinguish the candles one by one. And if the conditions are just right, it'll extinguish that last candle. Well, let's go and take a look at a homemade device that I constructed probably now five years ago. It's not the original, because in the traveling back and forth, things happen to, uh, in shipping. But we're going to take a look at one a little bit more elaborate than this, and we'll see if we can get that to work. So we're going to go back to the, another lab table. Same principle behind this. I'm going to light the candles. Hope they didn't put in a trick candle in the bottom. There we go. Again, I'm going to generate some carbon dioxide. This flask is slightly larger than the, the previous one. Then again, I have a slightly larger apparatus. I've also done this, instead of using flasks, I've used two liter containers, three liter, uh, two liter soft drink bottles, three liter soft drink bottles. All right, if I may have the lights down now, we'll see how this goes. Oops, I don't want to put it out with the, the liquid. Mm. I'm not getting terrific cooperation. And I guess that last candle is not going to go out. Again, though, you get the idea behind this. And, and my guess is that the air currents in here are such that there's, there's too much of a draft that it takes the carbon dioxide away from going into the beaker and filling it. We saw a little bit of a flickering of that flame. Almost went out, and that was about it. One of the advantages of using a two or three liter soft drink bottle, I can compress that and force the last bit of carbon dioxide out of that soft drink bottle and that often is what's needed to get that last candle extinguished. But students are still in awe of this, and I certainly am when I do it. Uh, so 
Uh, that's what I refer to as the candle snuffer.